Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Here today with Red and TJ from Loving Life Hitched Up, and they're going to give us a tour today of their teardrop trailer. So join us. Hello, and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hi, Patrick. Thank you so much for having us on your channel. I'm Red. This is my husband, TJ, and this is our Tab 400. We named our toes in the sand, and it's our travel trailer made by New Camp. It's boondock a, Light. Yep, it's a 2020 Boondock Light. It uh, weighs in about 3,100 pounds uh, wet, and it's uh, 18.25 feet long and just under nine feet to the top of the, uh, the vent cap on the roof. So would you like to take a look inside? Follow us. So even though it's a little trailer, it has all the amenities you could ever possibly want. A very comfortable bed, a nice kitchen with lots of storage. We have a closet. We also have a wet bath for all our needs here. And our dinette area also turns into a very comfortable seating area. So the bed itself is just a little bit short of a queen size bed. It's a 54 by 79. So you have plenty of space, even though you got that little slant of the teardrop, you have a huge stargazer window in the back that opens that space up for great ventilation back here. And TV, if you wanna watch your TV, you got a 12 volt Jensen. So you don't have to be hooked up to shore power. You can still watch TV as needed. Radio is up on this side over here, which gives you a DVD player and multiple zones. You can set it to run uh, front, middle, or all the zones, giving you kind of like a nice little surround uh, sound setup. We love the uh, Stargazer window, gives us the option. It's pretty big, but it comes with screen. You put the screen down if you want to keep the bugs out, or blackout shades give you that privacy at night when you want to sleep. But this is great for ventilation, and we love it when we're camping. We get to sleep here and still have a great view overhead. Now underneath the bed, the bed is a three-piece mattress system, and that you would think seems kind of odd, but it's built on the Froley system, which I'm going to show you is a cushion system underneath the mattresses. It's broken into three pieces because several of our systems are located under here. So these are the Froleys. This gives you some cushion and gives a great amount of uh, additional uh, comfort to the mattress system here. And now underneath here, one of our systems, this is the Elwell Air 8 air conditioning system built in here. And that gives us a ducted air conditioning throughout the entire coach. So the air is ducted through. And on the right hand side here, you see that blue box. That's a 1200 sine wave uh, inverter system so that we can run uh, from our 190 watt solar panels on the roof. That gives us a recharging of our batteries. Also located in the back, under the bed, uh, we can't see, you gotta take the cover off, is our two six volt, 220 amp hour uh, batteries. So we can boondock, no power for quite a bit of time. And um, we've done four or five days with no issues. Like I said, 190 watts of solar on the roof gives us that option. We have a couple of outlets that are set up specifically to run off of that inverter at the on switch. So you have one by the bunk, so you need to charge phones, run a CPAP machine or any of that stuff, it's right there. Or also up in the front for cooking or whatever else. Comes with a fantastic fan, three speed, fantastic fan. We'll either pull air in or pull air out. We added on the top, so it has a manual crank. We added an additional vent over the top so we can drive with it open and or leave it open during the rain so that we don't have to worry about rain and moisture coming in um, as well. Now, all the lights in the camper are LED. We have lights off the back bed area uh, with two additional reading lamps that go blue or white and more LED lights here and then all around the cabin as well. So the area lights are pretty good and using the LEDs is a lot less draw on your electrical system. So it helps with the uh, being able to be uh, off grid and uh, give you that extended power um, while you're doing that. Now, Dometic two burner propane stove. This does not unfortunately have a self igniter. So you have to carry a, a, a means to ignite that. The newer versions, they've upped that to a um, self igniting system. And we opted 
for, there's two options in this particular layout. You can either get a three-way or a two-way fridge. We opted for the two-way fridge, though looking on the outside, it seems like it's pretty small, but being as it's a two-way fridge and uh, runs off a battery or shore power, it's much deeper than a propane fridge. So the difference between the two and the three-way fridge is less than one cubic foot between the two versions. So the top portion here is a freezer. And I will tell you, this is so uh, efficient. If you crank this up to five, the entire thing turns into an ice box. Uh, we set it too high first couple of times and actually froze our eggs right out of the shells. Um, so, you know, we've learned to adjust and we can do about a week to a week and a half worth of groceries in there. A great thing about this kitchen as, is that you never have to worry about where you're going to put your stuff because we have plenty of space, even a little hidden compartment underneath. And then we have this drawer here. Right now it's not full because we're at home now, we're not on the road, but plenty of space for all our needs, our kitchen needs, as well as this area up here where I added the extenders here. So now we're able to keep everything we may possibly need. We also use these containers so to keep things from bouncing around while we're on the road. And they close very nicely. We also have an area here with these containers and we keep all our food in here, uh, keep stuff up here, kind of our pantry area. We never have a problem finding a place for our needs. Then here is our sink, okay? So as you can see, just fold it down, works very well. And additional storage here. Now we love these latches because when you're about to hit the road, all you have to do is press it and you know that everything's secure. That's one of the great things I love about this little space is that when you're about to hit the road, you just have to check a few cabinets and you know you're done. Now, our closet, we love our closet. There's, uh, let's see, here's the light, okay? Now, we, two people, we overpacked last summer because we just had so much space for all our needs. Love that we can put these containers in here, our clothes stays organized, no need to worry about clothes falling out. Same thing with this hanging organizer. We added this bungee so that our clothes would stay inside when we drive. No problem with that. Not a lot of hanging clothes, but if we need it, we have that option. So also contained in the closet here, one of the uh, features of this unit is it uses the Aldi system. And in the back here is the glycol the reservoir, and it gives you the opportunity to look right through and see where you have your glycol level. And that glycol is what actually heats our hot water and also warms our coach. Underneath here is a, a mechanical access for your water pump and some ducting for the air conditioning and other electrical uh, things. And this is where you can do some of your winterization. It's uh, very easily accessible to get you in and out to do that kind of work. The Aldi system, if you're not familiar, the Aldi system warms the glycol uh, in the uh, chamber in the back and it circulates around the coach. And if you see, you see little vent holes here at the, at the top of the cabinets and also at the base of the floor. And as that glycol circulates around, kind of like a radi old radiator in your house, the heat is a warm heat from radiation, not hot air blowing on you. So you, it warms, I mean, it actually can make this coach way too hot. Right. Uh, we've had it set up a little high, but yeah, definitely. And that will work off of battery um, or, and uh, propane. So you, you need the battery to circulate the pumps, but the propane actually heats the, uh, the glycol and it has the opportunity to do both. So if you're on shore power, you can, you can juice up its ability um, by hitting uh, the settings on the control panel I'll show you so you get a, a little bit m faster uh, warming and uh, more circulation. So we love these windows. These windows are dual pane acrylic and they're huge. This was a huge factor for us when we decided to purchase this camper because the number of windows that open and how large they open gives you that wide open space. And, now, uh, I'm claustrophobic. Yeah. And believe it or not, the minute I came into this trailer, I said, you know what? I could actually live here, mainly because of all the windows and how they open and just that whole open feel space. Yeah. So you get your bug screen, 
keeps your you know your little bugs and creatures out and if you want that privacy the best part is it doesn't have to be all the way up or all the way down you can choose so maybe you want a little more ventilation at night but some privacy makes a huge difference so this is what we call the brains of the whole operation uh, it's your control panel this gives you your uh, immediate access when you come in you can turn on your you know your accent sink lights your uh, water pump this is uh, on board it has a 22 gallon fresh water tank so you, we carry our own water with us and we can utilize the pump there to uh, charge the system if we're not hooked up to, to city water or an outside water source. And it also gives you indicators for you know, how much power in your batteries, uh, how much water in your fresh, your black, and your gray. Now your uh, gray tank is going to be um, 18 gallons of gray and 12 gallons of black in your system that we can carry so when we're off grid we use these now these are not 100 percent accurate it's just a, a, a sensor um, but you know we monitor it gives you a rough idea and then to the left of that is the aldi system and that that gives you the way that we can uh, heat our hot water so here's the control so like i said right now we're set up the green would tell you that you're on propane if we had the ability to go to electric you would hit the plus button and that would put both systems in there so you can have both working to heat and if you want to do hot water for showers, you hit the plus and that little uh, triangle would light up and that kind of boosts how much hot water it tries to create on a faster. And then the top is your heat, uh, actual heat settings, very similar to your, um, your house, just up for down, you know, all that. This here is our wet bath. We have everything we may possibly need in here. We have a fold down sink, again, with the fold down faucet. Lots of space for all our toiletry needs. Everything is, fits perfectly right up here. We have hooks for our, um, our towels and very comfortable toilet here. And when it's time for a shower, all you have to do is take this and it goes around the whole perimeter of the bathroom, keeping everything dry, not just in our uh, shelves back here, but also our door. Now, in here, we also have our vent, a little fan, right? Open that up, and we have a little window. Then over here is obviously our shower. So we get a lot of great hot water in here. The Aldi really helps. The uh, bottom is that this is one of the areas where the Aldi heat actually radiates out of there, warming this entire space in the bathroom here so that hot radiator vent is in there and that warm water rises up out of the uh, that heating area so like I said it is a ducted air conditioning you see the uh, little ducts down here we, they're adjustable they come in and out so you can adjust how you want that air to uh, flow and the Elwell Air 8 over here um, only works um, on either shore power meaning you have to be plugged in or you have to be running a generator and we can run this off of a, a little honda 2200 eu generator um, and uh, runs our air conditioning just fine and that also gives you the option to air condition or you can just set a fan setting and just have it move air around it's a little louder than running a max air fan um, the max air fan is a little quieter for that type of uh, circulation but you can that is a great option for you in the front you have your inverter, this is how you would turn your 1200 watt inverter on and off, and that would power this outlet and the outlet by the bed. This uh, two uh, USBs and a cigarette adapter um, as well there for you. In here is our fuse panel where all your fuses and your uh, breakers and all that are set up uh, for you for all its electrical. There is a compartment under here, but it's closed for you know mechanical access only. And this is your propane and uh, carbon monoxide sensor. So if you have a propane leak in the camper, the alarm would go off and let you know that there's an issue. And this area is a dinette, but it also converts to um, 30, it's a, I think it's 34 by 72. Um, so it does make for a nice little comfortable sleeping spot. Or, but we prefer, because we travel just the two of us. There we go. We prefer to actually utilize it as a couch. And that's what I think the best part about this uh, little setup is that it also becomes a couch. It's a very comfortable couch. 
do a lot of our work here. We just relax sometimes. So this specialty cushion uh, that comes with the whole setup is needed to turn this. And then you reverse these two cushions. There you go. Is change and give you a cushion across the back and you can kick back, relax. You have a little table on the end if you want to put your coffee or uh, you know your adult beverage, if you so choose. <laughs> and but, with this window, you yeah, can't beat the this view. wide open space was one of the reasons why this is our one of our favorite spots in the, the camper is having this huge window that opens practically 90 degrees, giving you all this wide open. So you don't feel like you're closed in and there's porthole windows on both sides. So these two porthole windows add that extra light and they do have blackout shades on that side. Yep. We can close it. Oh, where is that? Well, kind of stuck here. There we go. We can close that up. Now, here's another little area where we keep a lot of our clothes. We can keep our baseball caps. It's unbelievable how much you can keep back here. And we use this up here as well for storage. So this is why I'm saying that and those, those you... bins come in handy so that you, know, you take stuff in and out. So like if we have to unload the camper, we don't have to grab all the stuff. We grab the bins and they go with us. Uh, Underneath this particular cushion is... You really don't even have to take off the whole cushion. I just just lift it up a little. Yes, yeah, so I can get it out. So under here is a whole nother storage area that is pretty deep and pretty long. And if you look, you can see the thickness of the wood that is used when they build this. Um, very well made, it's Amish uh, cabinet work. The drawers are dovetailed and uh, nice thick and they put sh uh, struts in there to help hold up the lid so it doesn't slam down on your head. In the 2021s, this area is now where the air conditioning unit goes. So the, this storage area becomes the section underneath the bed. So they just kind of flip flop those two pieces. But yeah, great, uh, great amount of space in there as well. Now this bed, in this configuration can be used as a, another sleeping area and it's 72 inches across. So I'm 5'8 and I stretch out uh, very, very well um, in this area, if, you know, if you want to sleep or we have a few camping friends that this is where their dogs sleep. All right, so now we're going to take you outside because we have some really cool things to show you on the outside of our trailer. And we'll give you a peek of where the mechanicals are there as well. You didn't point out yet this door, all the little features for we keep our masks up here. Sometimes we keep uh, some brochures up here, garbage bags over here, and also has a little privacy shade. Now our trailer, you can see the trim is teal, but when we first purchased this trailer, the trim was actually black. My husband loves me so much that before we even took the trailer out on the road, he used Plasti Dip and painted the entire trim of this trailer, brand new trailer, but I think he really did a great job with it. Well, we wanted to personalize it and we feel like that teardrop, uh, whole teardrop shape uh, lends really well with that retro uh, turquoise. And um, so we, you know, give it a try. What's the worst? Yeah, what's the worst that can happen? And we also have a full door uh, screen that keeps all the bugs out and they give you a great little uh, yellow LED light above and the stairwell, the stair recline, uh, fold in and out with a light that automatically pops on when you open the, uh, the stair. The, uh, this is part of the boondock. The handle's changed. It's a, a beefier, a nice grab-on to get in and out. So for safety, it gives you a really good opportunity. The entire coach is a aluminum tube uh, construction and Asdale on side. So the way that means is it's not wood on the outside. It's a composite um, with fiberglass skin. So that gives you great opportunity to do uh, things keep from mowing it. And then you have outside outlets. These uh, will only work when you're on shore power generator. They're not uh, available to you when um, you're on. So the other aspect of the boondock panel is a much more aggressive tire and rim setup and also gives you added ground clearance. So a little bit more lift on the, um, the underside of the camper. So if you're going over rough terrain or in and out, it definitely makes for a great thing. And we added the uh, TST tire monitors. Um, when you only have two axles, you got to make sure that you know what's going on with your tires. You have a blowout, you can have an issue, and that runs to a monitor inside the truck. And I went with that one because it doesn't need a booster, so I don't have to add anything in between. I just turn on the monitor and I can tell what's going on with my tires. 
In the back here is the uh, storage area. We carry a lot of our really cool stuff like our levelers, our leveling blocks, and that is also where our battery uh, kill switch turn off in there is in the back there. This compartment goes pretty deep to the back here, um, up under the, the edge of the bed in here. So this is the only uh, exterior storage that we have um, from the factory on this. Now underneath the bottom here, we have uh, two leveling jacks from the rear. They, they will go down and they uh, push on the bottom and you can see the access down there for the, like the air conditioning vent and everything comes from the bottom underneath the camper. And this is the vent for the batteries. Uh, two 220 amp um, batteries in the, underneath the back of the bed and that vents through there. Now, a lot of people say, why does this have handles on it? Well, this camper is pretty light and on when the wheel is in the front disconnected, it can be moved around. We actually did it when we bought it. We pulled it out at the dealership to be able to hook it up to uh, check it out. So it can be moved by two people. And on the top here, right above, you can see where we have the uh, solar panels and that's the vent fan that we just uh, cover that we decided to add so we'd not have to worry about if we left it open in the rain. And uh, the 2020s did come with a backup camera. So what this does is gives us the opportunity not so much to see what's behind you when you're parking because um, I have a spotter for that, which is the safest way, but I like it because it lets me see the traffic behind me and uh, like a motorcycle or whatever. So I can, it makes it easier for me to drive that way and uh, give us that little bit of safety. Um, on this side we have in the 2020s as uh, you know storage for the you know your all of your sewage needs so in here you have your connectors for your sewer hose uh, that that extends in there um, I carry two because you never know and this is the vent for the Aldi so the hot air comes out of there you have to make sure that that stays clear and then moves into the uh, these are kind of the guts underneath of some of the water systems the Aldi system Right in there, that big silver box and your bypass for the hot water, your adjuster for your uh, temperature and some low point drains for the hot water system and the fresh water system, followed by your hookup for your shore power. And then your also gives you a satellite. You could do satellite and or cable TV. We have a portable antenna we use um, when we're out and we need that. So, this would be your fresh water hookup here for city if you have a hose. I use the uh, clip, clip on and off. It makes life a lot easier coming in and out of campsites. One, two, three, it's disconnected. And here you can manually just pour water in to the uh, holding tank if you don't have uh, power on that. We have the uh, luxury of an outside shower here that uh, lets us rinse off our feet. And if you had a dog, you could wash your dog. Uh, both hot and cold, also the same on the back. Now has two, two tanks, the gray tank, which is shower and sink, and the black tank, which is the toilet. You have two separate connections. They're separate tanks drained separately um, for you when you need to go to the dump station. So like I said, we got tw uh, 18 gallons and 12 gallons of black. And the coolest thing that I love, even on a camper this size, they gave us a black, uh, black tank flush. So when you're at the dump station, you hook up a water hose to this, and inside the toilet holding area is actually a wand that, uh, with jets that sprays water around, rinsing down the inside of that storage tank and gets rid of the funky smell and all that good stuff, letting you uh, clean all that great stuff out. So my husband added these boxes. So this only came with this diamond plated box, which and, has- Yeah, and the, the rack. And yeah. the rack. And here's where our propane is. And we do have some storage inside. So we have 20 pounds of propane right on board. And we keep a bunch of our other junk up in the front here that uh, we like. Also on these boxes, we, we opted to add these two aluminum diamond plate boxes because it matches. But what this lets us do is one side, we keep all of our electrical connections and the opposite side, we keep all our water connections, our water hoses, water filter, and all that kind of stuff, keeping those two things separate. And they are lockable. Um, it wasn't a real easy addition, you know, on the bottom, we just use those uh, uh, holes in the bottom. I also opted to add an additional uh, hose carrier down here so I can carry an additional length of uh, sewer hose because, you know, God forbid you end up being a little farther than you're, you are able to. 
and right below that you see is a uh, full-size spare tire that lowers from the other side is a little crank and it comes down and uh, gives you that opportunity to have a nice size spare as needed uh, we had a jacket aero bike rack. There's a, like a Y-shaped piece here that lets us carry two bikes uh, when we travel because we love to do bike riding when we're out on the road. And I added the Anderson uh, weight distribution hitch system here. Uh, I did this myself, pretty simple. Uh, some folks say we wouldn't need weight distribution because of the weight of our camper and the ability of our tow vehicle. But I love it because it has built-in anti-sway. So what this does, the, the ball is not attached to here. It runs through a friction sleeve. And if the trailer started swaying, those connections to that triangle on the bottom helps control that sway through the back of the, uh, the, the camper, making it a little bit safer in my opinion. Um, so we really, we really like that feature. Now the tow vehicle we use is a 2020 uh, Ford Ranger, uh, Super Cab, um, XLT, you know, uh, tows really well. It's got the four cylinder EcoBoost engine and we have no complaints uh, as far as power. Uh, it does, obviously when you're towing, it does drop the gas mileage a little bit, not tremendously, but uh, very comfortable. It's a great matchup for us because we didn't want a big giant truck. We didn't want a big giant camper. Um, and well, the beauty of having such a small trailer is that we've been able to park this on city streets. We also were able to camp at an actual just tent site. They allowed us yeah. because we were small enough and we're looking forward to being able to continue traveling out west and just the maneuverability a, of a Tab 400. Yeah. It's great. So, and you know, with that added height underneath, we can go over pretty much anything, you know, rougher roads, things like that. So we, we, um, the truck came from the factory with a seven pin hookup, which is what you obviously need to do a tow a camper like this, which is set right up in here. Uh, it does not have a factory um, uh, brake module, so I use the Kurt Echo Brake, which is a, a Bluetooth system where I plug that in and connect and I use my phone as a, an, an app to do that. And that works really well, um, but probably at some point in the future I'm going to go with a, a permanent mount because it's the kind of thing that you, uh, it, you know, it just sits out there by itself. You, if you forget to take it inside, um, you have problems with that and, and it will drain the batteries. So having a separate connection in the long run probably be the best way to go. So a really cool feature is this Keter rail, they call it, that runs the entire perimeter. It's actually on both sides of the camper. What this allows you to do is there are uh, awnings that are made that slide in and rotate around. And they come from like little shades to full like awnings. Like we have a, a pretty large, uh, extra large awning. And they also have a full, um, there's a, like a side room. Yeah, yeah, side room, like a full tent that comes out pretty far. So you're adding all that little added extra outside space if you want on the uh, outside of your camper. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour of your beautiful teardrop travel trailer. Can you tell us a little bit about your background before you jumped into the travel trailer lifestyle? Well, honestly, I was never into camping until I met my husband just a few years back and he exposed me to outdoor camping uh, in a tent. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we tent camped. I tent camped a lot, you know, younger, um, all the way across the country. And we were tent camping and it was really hot one day. <laughs> And we were sleeping on the ground and all that, and we said... Neighbors were really noisy in the middle of the night, and that and she, was when we She said. said, that's it, no more. And I said, we originally were going to put off uh, getting an RV till we retired, but we decided uh, with the changes in the world going on that we wanted to still travel, and having our own bathroom, kitchen, and all that stuff was going to be a great option yeah. for us. So we started looking, and... Having not towed anything in a long time, we didn't want to go huge, mm -hmm. and we looked at everything we could try to find out there to try to find the best quality build, best for us features. And then of course, you know, it has to appeal to you. And we saw this and it was kind of like a love at first sight kind of deal. It definitely was. And I'll tell you, no matter where you go with a Tab 400, people have a ton of questions, you yeah. know, from whether, do you really have a TV in there? Do you have a bed? Can you walk inside that? Yeah, can you stand up? Can the stand inside up? is like six, five. Um, I, I'm five, eight. I don't hit my head on anything. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of room. People are amazed when they actually look in uh, just how much space is there. Um, and even though it's new, we've been asked, is this, how old is this? And yeah. I remember saying to somebody, oh, it's a 2020. And he did not believe me. Yeah, he, he really thought, thought, thought like this was retro. Old, you know, retro kind of deal, but yeah. 
But the advice we would give people is if you're thinking about buying a camper, don't put it off. Because honestly, yeah. we had figured we would do it when we were closer to retirement. Yeah. And we're so glad that we didn't wait, that we yeah. took the chance and yeah. got it earlier than expected. Oh, absolutely. The adventure, you know, we can go anywhere, do anything, We, you know, and uh, the more time we're in it, the more time we want to be in it. And yes. uh, yeah, so don't put it off. Uh, it's it's worth the, the trouble and, and you'll have a great time. And I, I just followed you recently on social media and on YouTube and you just got back from a pretty long trip. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we spent actually last summer, we've actually spent 21 weeks in our trailer, even though we're not full timers yet. And we did spend seven weeks now recently down in Florida, mainly to get away from the cold. And we loved it. We have a great time, and because of the size, we can go anywhere, like we were saying before. Fit now, in anywhere, pretty much go anywhere. And we, we do a couple months at a time. Like we're, we're, you know, we work in the school system, so we're off in the summertime. So this coming summer, we're planning on uh, Mount oh. Rushmore, South Dakota, Colorado. We're going to a couple of uh, we have some rallies. teardrop rallies. Tear, We've yes. never camped next to another teardrop ever. We've only seen a handful of these around. So we're going and the whole place is going to be packed full. It's going to be an odd experience to be not the only one in the campground. Did you run into difficulties with internet while you're out on the road? We, uh, most Wi-Fi and internet is horrible. So uh, we did some research and I came up with a, a company um, uh, and I use, it's called a pep wave. So in that pep wave, it contains multiple SIM cards for multiple carriers. I could put in more than one SIM card for different manufacturers. And it allows me to uh, not only boost existing Wi-Fi, but also to use that cellular. Um, but it works with multiple uh, directional antennas, MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. So instead of just boosting on one channel, it searches through all and prioritizes all of those uh, signals to give you the best possible strength and the best uh, going in and out. And it's, it's pretty uh, hands-free once you get it set up. And we use that and uh, she actually was able to teach um, for a while on Zoom, so it's pretty good. I'm sure uh, some of the viewers here are gonna wanna be able to follow your journeys uh, can you tell us a little bit of how they're going to be able to get in touch with you? Well, we are uh, on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel called Loving Life Hitched, Hitched Up. up. Uh, we're also on Instagram. Uh, same thing, Loving Life Hitched Up. And uh, that's that's our gig. And uh, we have we have some more tours. And we do post all of our location videos, where we go, and our little adventures, and all that you know, cool stuff that some we use. Some of the use. upkeep with the yeah, maintenance, trailer, trips, maintenance. ticks, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much for adding some value to the RV community of some of your insights and some of the places you've gone to, as well as a tour of your beautiful trailer. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I'd love it. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.